Hi viewers, welcome to our next weekly update. Today's date is the 28th of November 2021, just for reference sake. And let's jump right into what the most recent pool stats are. I did change the biggest period sheet that I use so that everything is the same, everything is aligned. So the biggest period that I have for data for all across all tender pools is for 39 days. Just to make sure that there's no risk skew in the results or nothing. So for 39 days, currently in first place is F2 pool. Last week in the bigger period, F2 pool was in fourth place. Second place is mining pool hub. Last week it was in third place. Ethermine is currently in third place. Last week it was in second place. Crazy pool dropped down from first place last week to fourth place this week. But as I said, this isn't a bigger period anymore. It is currently only 39 days. Comment down below if you want me to add the full period again. Just bearing in mind that flex pool, I only have 39 days currently and the data continues to grow as the days go past. In fifth place, currently it is flex pool. Previously it was in ninth place. Nano pool is currently in sixth place. Last week it was also in sixth place. Ivon is unchanged in seventh place. Z pool moved up from tenth place up to eighth place. Two miners went down from fifth place down to ninth place. And Crux pool was last week in eighth place. This week it is in tenth place. So let's go to the 30 day block. This is now comparing 30 days to 30 days last week as well. So these results might be more relevant for this week. Currently in first place it is Z pool. It went up from last week, it was in 5th place to 1st place this week. 2nd place currently is F2 pool, last week it was in 3rd place. Mining pool up was last week 2nd place, this week it is in 3rd place. X pool was in 6th place, this week it's in 4th place. Ether mine is currently in 5th place, last week it was in 4th place. Crazy pool is currently in 6th place, last week it was in 1st place, so that's quite a big drop. Crazy pool had a rough last couple of days. Nano pool was in 7th place and it is currently in 7th place. Ivon is unchanged in 8th place, 2 miners is unchanged in 9th place and Crux pool is unchanged in 10th place if we look at the last 30 days. Now if you only look at the last 15 days and just for reference sake for the newcomers, these amounts here on the right hand side. This is the ETH value that you will get for each 100 mega hash per second that you have in your mining rig. So that's the gauge that I use to rank the pools. Z pool is in first place. Last week it was in first place. F2 pool is currently in second place. Last week it was in sixth place. X pool is currently in third place. Last week it was in seventh place. Mining pool hub is currently in fourth place. Last week it was in third place. Nano pool is currently unchanged in fifth place. Ether mine was last week in fourth place. This week it's in sixth place. Crux pool was in tenth place. It came up to seventh place. Ivon was in ninth place. This week it is in 8th place. Crazy Pool was last week in 2nd place and it went all the way down to 9th place for 15 days. And 2 Miners was in 8th place last week and currently it's in 10th place. Going down to a shorter period, so for the last 7 days F2 Pool was in 4th place last week, it's currently in 1st place. Crux Pool was in 10th place, it's all the way up to 2nd place. So in the last 7 days Crux Pool had a couple of big days which made it move quite a bit in the rankings. However, previously before that crux pool was lower so you have to bear in mind if you want to jump around in pools you might catch certain pools when they are having their biggest days but then again you might also catch certain pools when they're having their worst days so that's up to you to decide where you want to go z pool was in first place last week it's in third place this week x pool was in fifth place and it moved up to fourth place mining pool up was in eighth place last week and it moved up to fifth place if the ether mine moved from ninth place up to sixth place and a pool moved from 6th place down to 7th place. Ivon moved from 7th place down to 8th place. Crazy Pool moved from 2nd place all the way down to 9th place. It's a substantial drop. So hopefully for the Crazy Pool miners, hopefully next week is better, but this past week was not the best. Then 2 miners was in 3rd place last week and all the way down to 10th place. So most recently Crazy Pool and 2 miners had both quite bad weeks. Adding a new sheet in here, which will not get that regular updates, it depends on the payouts that I get. 
So just to share with everyone a calculation that I do when I get payouts is I make sure that the actual money that the pool says or the actual ETH that the pool says are paying me out obviously less all the fees and the GUI that is the amounts that I get into my wallet. So over here you can see I had a payout from two miners on the 10th of August and that variance in ETH was very small. In USD it was 0 0.00003 variance in US dollars. Then on the 10th of August I also got a payout from Ethermine and over there you can see that there was actually technically a short payment of 30 US cents with the payment from what the pool said the Ether they paid and then less all the fees that is in Etherscan and then the final money that arrived in my wallet. On the 2nd of September I got a payout from Ivon which is why you see these negative values because Ivon pool pays your fees for you where almost all of the other pools do not pay your fees for you. That's why the you see negative values here. So technically for being with Ivon, I saved $8.57 for that specific payout. And then on the 4th of October, I saved $6.50 for that specific payout. Then we go to the 19th of October, back to Ethermine, where you can see that technically I had a short payment there where I received less than I should have of 99 cents. Then on the 7th of November from Flexpool, I received a short payment of $2.43 cents so if you're getting more substantial payments just go and double check your payments that you received over there because then on the 23rd of november on ethermine i received the overpayment of 42 cents so technically i would say ethermine still owes me around 87 cents once i go back to them for a future test we'll see if they can catch up with that payment Currently, Flexpool owes me just under two and a half dollars, I'd say. But two and a half dollars is not really worth my time spending hours and hours of trying to get them to sort that out. If this was in two hundred dollar range, then I might spend some time with them trying to figure out what went wrong with those specific transactions. So just make sure that you check your payments as well. I prefer to use Etherscan, which gives you a bit more detail on the actual fees that was there, as well as a whole bunch of additional digits, which some of the other websites do not show you and then finally for the next portion i'm just going to show you quickly some people are interested to find out what my specific overclock settings are for my cards i do have a whole bunch of overclocking videos in my channel so you can go and check them out there however most of them are based on windows overclockings so if you're doing all windows mining then those ones are specifically for you however i'm currently using HiveOS, and that has slightly different overclocking settings so over here you can see my my Ivo is overclockings for my specific cards. First one that I have in the list, the GPU Zero, is a GeForce GTX 1660 Super, obviously 6GB of RAM. It is a NVIDIA card. It has Samsung memory GDDR6. And over here you can see it is currently running at 31.95 mega hash. The temperature is at 44 degrees. My fans is set at 58% there. And the software says 67 watts is running on that specific card. The core is at 1020 and the memory clock is at 1950. Going on to the second card, it is a GeForce GTX 1660 Ti, also obviously 6GB, it is a MSI card, it has Micron memory, it's currently producing 30.72 mega hash at 48 degrees Celsius, and the fans is set at 58%. This one is currently drawing on the software 71 watts at a core of 950 and a memory clock of 1900. The next card is a GeForce GTX 1660 Super, this is an Asus card, it has has Micron memory GDDR6. It's currently producing 31.63 mega hash at 45 degrees Celsius, bands at 58%, and the wattage on the software here states 54 watts. The core is 1020 and the memory clock is 1950. Then swapping over to our AMD section, it's a Radeon RX 6600 XT, 8 gigs of RAM, ASRock model. It has Samsung memory GDDR6. It's currently producing 32.25 mega hash at temperatures of 35 and 52 degrees Celsius. These fans are set at 47% and the wattage on the software here is 52 watts. At a core of 965, a VDD of 675, your VDDCI of 680, your MVDD at 1335 and the memory at 1135. And you can see all three my Radeon RX 6600 XT 
cards are exactly the same all are ASRock versions all have the Samsung memory and they all get exactly the same mega ash the only variant technically here between them is some get slightly different temperatures and other ones run slightly less wattages now just for interest sake these specific cards all three of them together pulls 180 watts at the wall so the average that they each pull is 60 watts at the wall or 32.25 mega ashes that it delivers now just going down further down the list the geforce gtx 1660 ti also msi version with micron memory at gddr6 reduces currently 30.66 mega ashes at 47 degrees celsius with a fan at 58 percent the wattage on the software states 68 watts with a core of 950 and a memory clock of 1900 the next one is the bigger card that i have it's a geforce rtx 3060 ti this is the non lhr version this is the original versions that came out 8 gigs of memory this is an asus card it has samsung memory gddr6 and it's currently producing 60.47 mega ashes at 47 degrees and this one's fan is set at 65 percent you can see the software usage for the wattage says 115 watts and the core is 1335 and my memory clock is 2250 now the last card in this specific rig is a geforce gtx 1660 super 6 gigabyte msi with micron memory gddr6 currently producing 31.29 mega ashes at 43 degrees celsius the wattage consumption on the software says 77 watts this one i'm running at a core of 1000 and a memory clock of 1800 so there you go there is all the overclocking settings that i have in ivo s for this specific rig that i'm using to make content on youtube with and currently this rig is using t-rex miner for the nvidia cards and team red miner for the amd cards i also did a test during the week for g miner and those results i'll release in maybe next week's video so remember to subscribe down below activate the bell notification so you get notified as soon as that one is uploaded so you can see what those results are of TRX Miner and Team Red Miner versus G Miner in the software. I hope you enjoyed the content of this week. Like the video down below and remember to subscribe. I'll see you again next time.